Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We are so glad that you are here, and we're so glad that many of you are here with uh, family members and friends, and I can't think of a better place to be uh, on Christmas Eve than here in church. So thank you for being here in person. If for some reason you can't join us today and you're watching online, we welcome you as well. Uh, we're here at North Citrus Christian Church, located right here off Elk Cam between Citrus Springs and Pine Ridge. Uh, every Sunday morning, 1030, uh, we're here, and we're here this morning to worship God. And uh, what a wonderful uh, Christmas Eve it is to be able to do that together. Uh, we do want to welcome you. Uh, if you are here for the first or second time or just popping in for a visit, we'd love to have a record of your attendance. Uh, there's little contact cards that you can find. They call a connect card there in front of you. Uh, please feel free to fill that out so we just have a record of your uh, name, address, phone number, and things like that. Uh, you can put those in uh, the boxes that are on either side of the auditorium. Those boxes are also for any gifts, uh, financial gifts that anybody wants to make. We don't pass an offering plate uh, here at church, so if you want to make any gifts uh, to the church, we believe that's between yourself and God. Just put that in the, the, the boxes that are on either end of the auditorium or in the back. Uh, there's also an opportunity to uh, do the QR code that's in the program, and that will take you to our website where you can give a uh, one-time gift or uh, recurring gifts as well. So again, Merry Christmas to everyone. I see lots of reds and greens as I'm looking this way and all everybody kind of blending in together. Uh, so that's wonderful. We're glad that you are here. So we want to uh, kind of touch base with some things happening uh, this week. Uh, we are thrilled to uh, have you here and uh, to invite you back tonight. So tonight we will have a very special Christmas Eve service that will start at 5 o'clock. So uh, we've kind of designed this to be about a 45-minute service, give you a chance to do everything you need to do with family, either before or after. Uh, but we'd like for you to include part of that service time uh, in. It would be completely different than this morning. Uh, so we want you to come and be a part of that uh, at 5 o'clock tonight. So when you come, it'll be light. And when you leave, it'll be dark, okay? So that'll be good timing uh, for tonight to be a part of that. Uh, just a couple notes uh, th this week only. Uh, our midweeks uh, will not be meeting this week only. Some of those kick back in as far as the adult study and stuff with the new year ahead and with our Citrus youth as well. Um, we are excited about the uh, study that is coming up in uh, January called Rooted. And I want to give uh, Joe an opportunity uh, to talk with us a little bit about Rooted and what's happening uh, with that, the discipleship study coming up. Okay, so uh, there have been a lot of questions. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about books and all that kind of stuff. The books have finally shipped. I was kind of stressed and worried that they would not ship, and we would have to delay the series or something. So they will, they will be here. I will be able to give them out. Uh, we'll either give them out on January seventh or the first time your group meets. Um, you don't have to have read anything for the first session. Um, so you will be getting your workbook. Either one of those uh, will work, and you can submit the dollars for that at that time. Um, also, we are having a group here that meets on Tuesday nights. We are going to have at least one more group that is meeting on Friday nights. I think we just didn't finalize that this morning. Uh, if we have a need for a third group, I'll have to look at all the sign-ups and de uh, determine that. Uh, but if you signed up either for Tuesday, um, if you normally come here, or Friday uh, is when those two groups are going to meet. I'll also have a, a, a schedule for, there's a couple special events that are going to happen in the study, and we will have that publicized as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a great study. We have the workbooks coming, and I look forward to those. Okay, sounds great. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, for the new year, so that's coming up just around the corner. Um, I know it seems like it's a year away, but yet you're going to blink and it's going to be here, 2024, okay? <laughs> so it is up on us. So uh, might mention in the back as well, we do have uh, offering envelopes that are available for 2024. So if you uh, give in, in that way through the offering envelope system, just simply pick those up and sign uh, for those, but those are available on the back table. And then two, uh, mark on your calendars. Uh, we're doing our potlucks right at the, be the first of each month. So the next uh, potluck will be uh, January the 7th, okay? So that next week is New Year's Eve. So we'll be back here New Year's Eve morning 
But then the week after that, two weeks from today, we'll have our first potluck of the year. So uh, mark that on your calendars as well. Uh, let's all be standing, if you will. And uh, j take a minute just to say hello to somebody around you. Just wish them Merry Christmas, okay? Alrighty, let's go ahead and uh, have a word of prayer, and then that will lead us right into our worship time together. So let's pray. Father God, thank you uh, for an opportunity just to come and worship together. Lord, thank you for an opportunity to come together with friends, uh, to see uh, family, um, to uh, uh, remember folks uh, that maybe can't be here today. Father, this is a season to uh, come together. Uh, with folks that are like family and those that are part of God's family as we come together to worship you. Thank you for this time together, and as we focus on you, we just pray for uh, your continued blessing uh, through this season and into the new year ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning again. Merry Christmas. Christmas Eve day again. Wow. I want to tell you, standing up here on the stage, I look around, uh, I see a lot of happy Christmassy, is that a word, faces, <laughs> what's the word? <laughs> anyway, if you would, we're going to play some Christmas music here, so please join us and let's sing out today.
singing a, a song called Away in a Manger, and I think with songs that we're so familiar with, we just sing them, and we don't think about what's happening, and um, the words are a little bit silly, too, you know, but God, the awesome, huge God who made everything in the entire universe, humbled himself to be born in this tiny little vulnerable baby all of God in a tiny baby and he experienced the messiness of our lives so that we could know him and be with him forever and so I want you to think about that as we sing this common kind of silly kids song today There is a beautiful passage in Colossians chapter 1 that describes who Jesus really is and what he came to this earth to accomplish. We begin reading in verse 15 where Paul says this, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning from and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or, thi on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This passage makes a rather bold claim that Jesus is God, that he is the, the same God who created the heavens and the earth, the things that we see and the things that we cannot see. God is so big and powerful and yet was somehow able to put on human flesh and enter our world. 
Paul also describes in this passage some really important truths about the authority of Jesus, that he is the head of the church. It's his plan, his purpose, his foundation. We also see that Jesus submitted himself, that even though he is the ruler of everything, the creator of everything, that he submitted himself to death so that all things might be reconciled to God. Meaning that he puts everything back in right relationship with God, that he repairs the things that are broken in our lives and in this world. And not just for us, but it says for all things, for all of creation, because creation itself groans under the weight of our sin. And to accomplish this, Jesus, he died, but he didn't just die. He allowed himself to be handed over to evil rulers, the Romans, to be tortured and then killed. And this demonstrates to us who God is. This is not the action of a mean-spirited, angry, waiting to zap you from heaven kind of a God. This is the work of a God who loves us so very much. We didn't deserve that because of our rebellion and guilt and hostility. But Jesus endured the pain of the cross anyway. So this passage gives us much to be thankful for. Many reasons to give thanks and praise to Jesus. It helps us to see the whole picture from Jesus' birth to his death his resurrection and his current reign in heaven. This passage brings a connection between Christmas, Easter, and beyond. And so today, while our minds are on the birth of Jesus as we celebrate Christmas, we can't lose sight of why he entered our world. And so as we take time to remember his sacrifice, let's also stop and think about his power in his authority, his humility, and love. As we remember his broken body and his shed blood, let's give him thanks for enduring so much pain and sorrow so that our sin could be forgiven and we could be reconciled to God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for what Jesus came to this earth to accomplish. We're grateful for the way that you decided to enter our world through the most humble of means, through being born to a humble family, being vulnerable to the elements and vulnerable to all the, the frailties of this life. And yet Jesus was faithful in all that he came to this earth to do. That you preserved his life until it was time for him to give it so that our sins could be forgiven. We're so grateful that he can sympathize with our weaknesses and our struggles and our pains and trials. But for most of all, we are grateful that he came to this earth to reconcile us back to you. That through his blood, that we have peace with you. That we have a restored relationship. That our sins are forgiven and we have a hope of eternal life. So Father, we thank you. We praise you for your authority and your power and your wisdom and your might. But we also thank you and praise you for your humility and sacrifice. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much, Crystal. We appreciate that. Um, we're going to start our service just a little bit different with the sermon. I'm going to ask uh, that we get uh, Sitter's Kids. Murray, would you mind grabbing Sitter's Kids back there? Have them come on forward. <laughs> Not physically, just to get their attention. And any other children that we have out here, if you want to come on up, uh, we're going to have a little special time uh, as they come on up to share with us on this uh, Christmas Eve. You know, Christmas means many things to many different people, and uh, I'm sure you're at a different uh, spot in your life today than what you were a year ago, and uh, lots of things taking place. Uh, so we want to just kind of reflect upon the true meaning of Christmas. Come on down. Come on down. Here they come. Here comes some, some of Citrus kids in. And anybody else who wants to join them for that, are, that are out here, feel free. Come on up this way, Mr. Jude. Go ahead and take a seat up here on the stage. Here comes all... Alder, and yeah, Tori and Isabella, all right, good to see you guys. Come on up, take a seat. Come on down, Mr. Eric. Here's Miss Nora and Sir Lincoln, all right. We got them all. All right. Here comes Miss Eve. So are you guys excited about Christmas? Infinite, yes. That is like to infinity and beyond. Um, so what are you excited about Christmas? Everything. What are some of the most important things about Christmas? Family? Jesus' birthday. So this is an opportunity for us just to kind of share the story of Jesus' birthday. And I can't think of a better time to do it than, um, than Christmas Eve as we come together. So listen, if you would, please, as we share the story uh, from Luke chapter 2, okay? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the town of David... A Savior has been born to you, and he is Jesus Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one earth, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word considering what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it are amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart and pondered them. The shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which are just as they had been told. So Christmas is an as exciting time of the year, and it's a time that, yeah, we enjoy time of family, and we enjoy time of presents, and Miss Nora? You want a giant controller. Well, you know what? God provided us a giant controller, and his name was Jesus. Ah, so he gave us, God gave us free will to make our own decisions. But to have God in control of our lives is the most important thing that we can do. And even though our bodies still have control and we make our own decisions, 
it's always smart to make a decision to put God in control of your life, right? All right, so we're going to sing Happy Birthday, Jesus, okay? So we're going to sing Happy Birthday, Dear Jesus, and then we'll go from there, okay? You guys ready? You guys know the Happy Birthday song? Well, you'll learn it, okay? You'll, you'll learn it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. All right, well, let's give Citrus Kids a hand and let's uh, thank them for being a part. You guys, go ahead. I am not quite sure where all that energy comes from. I, I have a little philosophy on that. I think that when we're born, God fills up our tank. And when we're younger, we don't know any better and we run it out. So when we get to like 30 and 40 years old, we've got like a fourth of a tank left to last, to last the rest of our lifetime. Um, but we're here. So uh, we're glad that you're here with us as well as we uh, conclude our series uh, from uh, the Old Testament and prophecy into the New Testament simply called God is here. God is here. And I know we're working on getting that up on the screen as we speak. Um, so we'll see what we can do. There we go. Um, God is here. So let's pray. Father God, we love you and we thank you for being our God. Lord, I'm just so grateful for um, children, youth in our lives. Lord, it's just a reminder to us of the innocence of a child. And Lord, how you came into this world through a child, through that innocence. And that innocence was maintained as Jesus made his choice to live for you and lived a sinless life so that we might have hope of eternal salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us this morning. We look into your word. Help us to focus. Help us to apply uh, these passages to our lives as we move forward into this Christmas Eve. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we are going to be following along uh, in the scriptures. And if you have your programs with you, there's also some sermon notes section. So please feel free to open up the bulletin and uh, find the sermon notes section there and take notes as we go. Uh, we're going to be starting back in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, uh, known as a prophet, uh, foreseeing what is to come and a message that was sent to the folks at the time of his writing, uh, but also had a dual purpose for uh, what was to come in the future. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 11 and verses 1 through 11. As this morning we look at the promised branch. The promised branch. All right, from Isaiah chapter 11, uh, starting with verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Folks, it's amazing uh, that uh, some uh, centuries before that this prophecy was put into place, um, the message that was there and, and how things uh, came about that uh, God's word is uh, for, foreseen, and that God uh, was able to uh, uh, find this uh, prophecy of the promised branch coming through. And we know that this promised branch from the root of Jesse, uh, who was David's uh, father, that this was a, a promise that Jesus would be born through that descendancy, through that uh, family tree of, of David. And indeed, that's exactly what took place. As we go back again, uh, it came from the, the stump of Jesse, a branch that will bear fruit. Uh, Jesus, uh, known as uh, uh, the Nazarene, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, a connection there, uh, the Spirit of the Lord resting upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, uh, counsel and power, knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and indeed that is seen through in many different ways. Uh, also, uh, we read in verses 10 and 11 of that Isaiah passage, in that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. 
The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. And that day the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and the islands of the sea. In fact, it was God's desire to have a remnant of the people of Israel to be saved. And now now it applies to us today because that remnant uh, came through Jesus Christ. And only through Christ can we experience salvation. So I want us to kind of move forward into the passage in the book of Matthew as we look at Matthew chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, you might be able to find one there right in front of you. Uh, Matthew chapter 2. As we've been reading this whole series of uh, God being here in our lives and making his appearance and uh, how he too fulfills the prophecy as uh, found in Matthew chapter 2. We're going to take a look at Joseph, uh, the father of uh, Jesus. Joseph, who was uh, set apart to be the earthly father, the one who is to raise uh, Jesus uh, in a way that was uh, pleasing to him. Now, many times uh, people refer to Joseph in, in different ways. Some call him a righteous man, a devout man. He, he did the right thing when he found out that, that Mary was pregnant. He wasn't quite sure how that happened. He got, had a, a dream, a message that came from an angel saying that this is from the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is something that, that we call you to kind of carry forth this responsibility. And so he took her home uh, as his wife. Uh, he did this. In fact, many people would consider uh, uh, Joseph to be one who is a, a, a dreamer because actually he encounters four different dreams. How many of you remember a Christmas carol? Christmas carol, and they always have the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, the ghost of Christmas future. Now, it, it, Joseph didn't encounter a ghost, but he did encounter four different dreams that came to him at different times. And as we take a look at this, some may uh, call Joseph the dreamer, okay? Not to be confused with Joseph who interpreted dreams back in the Old Testament, um, who was, uh, uh, had a whole different role. This is Joseph, the father of, of Jesus. And we read of some of these dreams just to kind of recount from Matthew chapter 2, verse 12, uh, the first dream that comes to him. And uh, we, we talk about the different things that are taking place there. Um, actually, I'm going back here a little ways. Uh, the first dream took place in chapter 1, so those aren't completely correct there. Uh, again, it was a, that first occasion when the Lord appeared to him and uh, told him to take Mary home as his wife, and uh, so he did that. But as we move forward, we move forward now into this section with chapter 2, verses 19 through 23, as we encounter some different encounters uh, from the angel of the Lord and in the dreams uh, that uh, he experiences. So picking up on chapter 2 and uh, picking up with verse 19. So this takes place after uh, the Jesus had already been born. This takes place as Jesus uh, is somewhat of a, a toddler, if you will. Uh, the wise men had already come and visited him at the house. Herod was uh, hot on the, on the war path, uh, coming after him. And Joseph still maintained the responsibility uh, to raise Jesus and to have uh, protection over him and to take care of him and to be the protector. And so uh, he had been called uh, out of Egypt. Uh, he left for Egypt, and that's uh, the, the fulfill of the prophecy that was there, uh, that uh, Jesus would be called out of Egypt. Out of Egypt I have called my son. And now at this time, uh, after Herod had died, because he had gone to Egypt to get away from Herod and had trying to kill all the, all the babies that were there, in Bethlehem, uh, verse 19 through 23, we're going to uh, read about his last two dreams and what takes place. So follow along with me, if you will, from Matthew chapter 2, uh, verses 19 through 23. And after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. And he said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. And so he got up, and he took the child and his mother, and he went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district 
of Galilee. And he went, and he lived in a town called Nazareth. And so what was fulfilled that was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. Beautiful passage of scripture that continues to show us that Joseph was connected to God. Folks, I don't know uh, where you find yourself this Christmas. I, I don't know um, what you're dealing with in, in your life or what, what is happening uh, as far as uh, your connection to God or your connection to your family or, or, or what kind of search that you're on. But I want to encourage you to be like Joseph. Not in the fact that he was just a dreamer, in the fact that he just kind of dreamed and did his own thing. No, uh, he was one who acted on God's directions. And I still believe that we have a God who is here today who gives us direction for our lives. And he desires that we act on his directions. No matter where he has brought you to at this season of time, he is still here to lead you and to guide you from this point forward. And that's exactly what he does in the life of Joseph. He's following God's directions. He was told to stay in Egypt until after Herod had died, and then the message would come back to him. And sure enough, an angel of the Lord appears in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and says, Herod has died. It is now time to get up and to take the child and his mother and to leave Egypt. And so that's exactly what Joseph did. He moved on from Egypt. Folks, I'm thinking about our lives again. I'm thinking about some practical application to our lives today. Has God ever called you to move on from certain places in your life? Perhaps there's been times that uh, you weren't a uh, Christian. Or maybe there was times that you didn't uh, follow God or you weren't uh, seeking him. And you've had to kind of move past those times and leave some of those in your past I want you to think about some of those uh, places, if you will. Some of those places in your life that you need to move on from. It was time for him to move uh, out of Egypt. It was time to, to move on. And what are some of those places in your life that may represent uh, the past, that may represent Egypt to you? Uh, places that, quite honestly, we, we don't need to go back to. We don't need to revisit uh, we've been there, we've done that, we got the t-shirt, and, and we're not real proud of necessarily what, what we've done or what, what, what we've been or where, what, what's, but we need to move on. You know, uh, Satan in some ways, he wants us to go back and to revisit those places time after time again and, and spend useless time there. He, he wants us to go back and, and just kind of revisit this. And you ever notice that Satan, when, when he gives you temptations, he always works on you in your weakest areas? You ever notice that? And it seems like the things that you dealt with in childhood are the same things that you deal with in, in young adulthood and in, in adulthood. He, he never lets up. He knows where your, your buttons are. He knows what but buttons to push. And he keeps trying to get you to go back to those same areas over and over again. It's time to move on from those places. I want you to take uh, just a minute. Just to think about well, some of those are places in your life. It, it, you know, quite honestly, I need to move on from. I, I don't need to go back there. I need to just let that be. I just need to let it go. It's part of my past, uh, but it doesn't define me. It's part of where I've been. And Joseph understood that he, he was no longer called to stay in Egypt, okay? Uh, Jesus was called out of Egypt, not to stay in Egypt. And so the angel gives him instructions uh, with a plan uh, to go to the land of Israel. And so, with uh, that instruction from God through the angel of the Lord and through the dream that had come to Joseph, uh, he planned to go to the land of Israel. And that's laid out here in the scriptures. Uh, for Herod had died, uh, so he got up, uh, took the child, verse 21, his mother, and he went to the land of Israel as the angel had instructed. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Now, Herod had a reputation, okay? And he was one, uh, as Joe shared with us uh, last week, uh, that did uh, fulfill his prophecy to, to slaughter those babies and, the, and all that took place in Bethlehem, and perhaps up to 30 individual lives were taken. 
Uh, Jesus' life was spared because uh, they were called out of Bethlehem and called to Egypt to go. But now that Herod had died, you'd think, well, wait, everything's now safe. Everything's fine. Well, guess what? Herod had three sons, okay? Um, of those three sons, the one who was the most violent and the one who was the most dangerous was Archelaus. And these three sons were given a division of the kingdom uh, to rule over. And it just so happens that where the land of Israel was in Judea was where Archelaus was now reigning and who had a, even a, a worse reputation than his father. And so Joseph, even though the angel had said, fear not, he's like, no, nah, you know, I'm, I'm here to protect this child. And I, I, I don't think I can uh, head that direction. And so having been warned in a dream at that point in verse 22, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. You ever plan to go somewhere in your life? You ever had plans in your life that didn't work out? Any of you? <laughs> Are you human? <laughs> uh, how many of you have always had a plan A and plan A didn't work out and you went to plan B and then C, D, E? You go just, just go down the whole alphabet. What are some of those plans in your life that just didn't work out? Think about that now. It's like, well, you know, I, I, you know, did, I planned to do this, and I planned to do that, and, and well, that, that didn't, you know, I ended up here in Citrus County, of all places. Nobody plans to move to Citrus County. That's what they say, but here we are. Um, you know, I, I planned to do this, and that, that didn't work out, and, you know, here, I, this relationship didn't piece together, and financially, we had to shift gears, and, and people that were very significant in my life, you know, they, they, relationships changed, some of them passed on, uh, this changed, this changed, but, but here I am now. What are some of those plans in your life that didn't work? You've got to be able to shift gears. You've got to be able to, to make adjustments on the fly, if you will, because that's how God works in our lives sometimes. Sometimes we have plans and we set forth on those plans, but then they, they shift. You know, it has been said that there are more shifts in planning and in job uh, career uh, planning than has ever been before. Uh, you may look back over years if you've been around for years, and, and it used to be in, in some places you could go and you could get your degree and then you could go to work for an employer and then you could stay employed with that employer for years and then retire from that. Same. Now it's constantly shifting. You get a degree and then you can't find a, a job and with that degree and then you go to this job and you go to that job and then you land here and then you land over there and how did I get here and then all of a sudden I'm out of Florida and here I got family here. I mean we used to have the nuclear family where everybody was like living together and there was you know Aunt Martha down the block and Uncle Uncle Benny over on the other side and on behind the you know, but now it's, you know, boom, states away, you know, and here we've got to fly in and see family, see family here. So, sometimes the plans just don't work the way that we plan. And, you know, that's okay because God is still leading us. And keep in mind that Joseph was still being led by the angel of the Lord, even though the plan was to go to Israel, even though the plan was to go to Judea, that plan didn't work out. So what happens in your life when the plan doesn't work out? <laughs> You can get upset. You can get frustrated. You can stomp your feet. Okay, you can pound your fist. You can say, I don't like it that it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to work out. Or you can work through it and say, okay, God, I don't know why this didn't work out. This wasn't what I planned. It wasn't where I planned to be. <laughs> Christmas Eve, 2023. This, what, this wasn't what I planned, the, the circumstances that I'm in, and here, here, but I'm here. I'm here now, and I have to make some adjustments in my life uh, on the fly. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to continue to follow your lead where you want me to go and what you want me to do. Well, Jonathan, what are you saying? I'm saying that it's okay when some plans in your life don't work out. Well, why is that? You ever think that maybe God has something greater in mind? And maybe we weren't the, the brilliant genius that we thought we were all along. <laughs> and maybe God knew better. 
when he brought us to Citrus County. Maybe God knew better when, when things shifted or things changed or things that were completely out of our control. And now we find ourselves in, in a new situation. Well, here it is. Joseph was now called to come home. He was called to come home to Nazareth. He went and he lived in a town called Nazareth. Yes, even if you go back to Luke chapter 2, the same Nazareth that they set out from when Mary and Joseph took their journey to Bethlehem to register for the census. He's being called to come back home. He's being called by the angel of the Lord. This is a place where you're going to raise your child. Jesus is going to be called a Nazarene to fulfill what was said through the prophets. This is a beautiful thing that takes place. You know, when we start thinking about this in our own lives, we we'll start thinking about what God is doing in our life. Are there some areas of your life where God is calling you to come home? Now, folks, I want you to think bigger than just geographic areas. Well, you say, you know, I always tell people, they say, well, where were you born? I always tell them I was a born loser. I mean, Hoosier, Hoosier. I always mess that up. Indiana, Indiana. From the Midwest, I was born in Indiana. I was a born Hoosier. Uh, well, is that home? I don't know. I, I moved from Indiana to, to Ohio to to Michigan, to, to West Virginia. I mean, they say home is where you hang your hat. And then what they say, I really need to get me a hat. I, I need to figure that out, to figure out where home is. Uh, well, home has been Florida since about 1991, so this has become home. Uh, to me, it's a place where I uh, got, got married, and had, we had our, our family together, and a place where we've, we've enjoyed. Uh, so home takes on lots of different connotations, lots of different meanings. But I'm not just talking about geographical location today. I'm talking about what does it mean to you spiritually to come home? What is God working in your life? What is something maybe you haven't listened to God, or maybe you just, did, just decided you're just going to go on your way, you have your own plans, but then that, those plans aren't working out. Okay, plan to go here, plan to go there, plan to do this, but yet God is still working on your heart. He's still working on your mind. He's calling you to come home. He's calling you to come home spiritually. He's calling you to understand the purpose of Jesus' life was not just from the cradle, but from the cradle to the cross. And that his purpose in your life is, it was a deeper meaning that it's going to make a difference from this point forward. Yes, you, you've had your past. Yes, you, you've come out of Egypt. You've come from, from uh, places and things that have happened in your life, but you don't stay there. You don't go back and revisit those. And you've shifted gears in your plans moving forward, but now he is calling you to come home. You may think, where? Nazareth? Nazareth? See, Nazareth didn't have the, the best reputation in the world um, at this time. In fact, we read from the uh, Gospel of John, uh, chapter 1 and verse 46, uh, there was some question about uh, the Nazareth. Uh, Nazareth, as the first disciples uh, followed Jesus, this, of course, is, as Jesus has has grown uh, after the time that he begins his ministry. Uh, the, the, he starts calling uh, Andrew and, and Peter and Philip. Uh, Philip, uh, here in uh, John chapter 1, verse 44, says he's from the town of Bethsaida. Uh, Philip found a friend of his named Nathaniel, and he told him, We have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets also wrote. We have found Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel's response was, Nazareth? Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And you may be a spot in your life that you may be wondering, where do you, God's calling me to do what? I, I don't get it. I don't, this wasn't my plan. This wasn't what I planned when I was, grew up as a child. This wasn't what I planned uh, even a year ago, last Christmas. This wasn't what I, God has is, is kind of shifted me in my life. And, and here I am. I'm in a different spot, a different place. And now he's calling me to Nazareth? Well, when God calls you somewhere, you learn, hopefully, not to question it. 
And I love Philip's response here as he speaks to his friend Nathaniel. His response is very simple when Nathaniel says, Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? And he simply says, come and see. Folks, this is the Christmas message for this morning. God wants you, he wants me, to come and see what he has prepared for you at this point of your life. We can question all day long. Nazareth, why, why, I don't want that job. I, I don't want, why are you sending me here? This, what, what does this look like? What, I, well, I, don't, I don't get it. Why, why is my family like here and there? And uh, just, I'm, I'm here and this, and, and I'm not sure how it's going to happen with health issues in, in the future and financial issues. I, how is all this going to piece together? I don't get it. And Jesus' invitation is very simple. And God just simply reaches out and says, come and see. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be by your side. I, I, I've sent you the Savior of the world in Jesus Christ, and God is here. Not just in the, in the scope of history and back into the prophecy and what that meant for uh, the Israelites and, and, and the scope of history and, and, and now in, in the time of Joseph and Mary and what that meant for the people of his day. But no, God is here now, today in your life. And he wants you to come and see. He promises that there will be a branch. There is a shoot that will come up from the stump of Jesse. And from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. And this branch is a similar word for Nazarene, which comes across with the prophecy that Jesus will be called a Nazarene. This branch, it says the Spirit of God will be upon Jesus. Folks, I don't know about you, but I think we live in a world today that needs the Spirit of God more than ever before. And folks, we can't allow just the spirit of, of the world and the spirit of what's happening in the world and, and the spirit of who we go to work with, with coworkers or even sometimes extended family and friends and neighbors. And, uh, there's a spirit out there that's not necessarily the Spirit of God. But what is the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God from the Scriptures in Isaiah says the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, the promised land, the pr promised branch. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. All of those things were fully in the person of Jesus Christ the promised branch, the Nazarene. How beautiful it is that when we need wisdom, anybody in need of wisdom out there today? <laughs> if you didn't raise your hand, nudge the person next to you, and they get, they get their hand. We all need wisdom, understanding, counsel, power that can come only from God, knowledge, fear of the Lord, not fear in the sense of being afraid, but fear in the Lord of, of respecting God, understanding that he is our authority. He is the creator of the universe, and he can do whatever he chooses to do in our lives. Uh, you say, okay, Jonathan, well, that, that's great. I understand this is all incorporated in Jesus, but how does this apply to me? Well, you see, Jesus left us his spirit when he left this earth, and he left us his spirit that is still true today, that involves love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So it's not just about Jesus. It's not just about the historical uh, thing that happened with Israel. It's not just about Mary and Joseph. It, it's about the Spirit of the Lord upon us, His promised children. He is still here today. He is still at work in your life. He is still calling you to, to leave places that you don't need to be. Come out of Egypt. He's calling you to make adjustments on the fly. Even though you've planned things and they haven't worked out, he has something better in mind. He is calling you home. And folks, we look forward to the home that we look forward to. And not just... To, uh, understanding of who Jesus is and, and the blood of Christ. That, that doesn't get any better than that, but it's the eternal home that he has prepared for us in heaven.
because of the blood of Jesus Christ. God is here, and he has come to rescue his people from sin and death. He is here today, and he is here to make a difference in your life. I'm going to ask the worship team again to come up at this time and prepare. I just want to talk with you for a minute as we prepare for our, our invitation together. I don't know where you stand spiritually with God. And quite honestly, that's not between um, me and, and you. <laughs> it's between you and God. I have my own um, struggles. I have my own personal relationship and, and with Jesus Christ. And I, I've got to work that out and all the things that that involves. In my, but where are you today? I believe that God is calling you to come home for Christmas. I believe he's calling you to come home. And perhaps there's areas of your life that need to be addressed. Perhaps there's areas of life that you just need to let go of. That Places where you have been, he's calling you out of Egypt. And maybe you still have some plans in mind that I'm going to do this and I'm doing it. Lord, bless me in this because I'm doing it. <laughs> As opposed to, okay, God, can you lead me here? I'm just going to take, by faith, I'm going to step into this new place called Na Nazareth. <laughs> can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Come and see. Come home. Lyrics to a song that says, come home for Christmas. Part of these lyrics read as follows. Come home to a manger. Come home to a story that's still true. Come home to a Savior who came down from heaven just for you. How long has it been since you and your heart talked to Jesus? Come home. Come home. Come home for Christmas. Let your heart return once again to the joy and the peace, the love and the hope. It's all right here waiting for you to come home for Christmas and to come home for good. Come home for Christmas. Come home for good. I don't know what God's working on your heart today. If you want to make a decision, he's calling you to come home this Christmas. We're here. We're here to, if perhaps for the first time in your life you're giving yourself to Jesus Christ, perhaps you're submitting yourself to what he's called you to, to be baptized into Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have a baptism right here. We can do that today. It doesn't have to be in front of everybody. It can be after church. It can just be quietly with just a few folks because it's between yourself and God. But he's calling you to come home and perhaps... The best Christmas gift you can give is by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Perhaps you're here and perhaps you've uh, already uh, called uh, Jesus home in your heart, but you need to call a, a church home. And if, uh, if you need to do that, you've already taken those steps, uh, give your life uh, to Christ and, and baptism into Christ, and you can call the church your home as well by simply coming home. Folks, again, this message isn't just for all those Israelites and a remnant a branch that will be grafted in someday that will be saved through Jesus Christ. It's not just for Mary and Joseph. It's a message for the whole world. And some 2,000 years later, it's a message for you and me. Because God is here now. And he calls you to come home for Christmas. Just be standing.
Folks, we invite you back tonight. i uh, love to see you all tonight and bring some folks with you if you can. Uh, beautiful service is scheduled at 5 o'clock tonight. So let's we'll start right at 5. And uh, we want to uh, kind of celebrate uh, this Christmas Eve uh, together. So come on back uh, tonight at 5, and, and we'll see you then. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the message that you gave to Joseph. And Lord, how he followed the message from the angel of the Lord and his dreams. Lord, how he left Egypt, again, fulfilling prophecy out of Egypt, you call your son Jesus, how he went on his way, trying to follow you, and then shifted plans to come home to Nazareth. Lord, I pray that you watch over each and every one of us. Lord, those areas of our life in which we need to come home, that you're calling us, perhaps it's our marriage, Lord, perhaps it's uh, our health and finances. Perhaps it's uh, our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, give us wisdom. Help us to reach out to somebody that can be helpful to us in that process. Because, Lord, we know that you are calling us home for Christmas. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone.